biggest question in, in maybe in economics and politics of the coming decades will be what to do with all these useless people. The problem is more uh, boredom and how, what to do with them and how will they find some sense of meaning in life when they are basically meaningless, worthless. My best guess at present is a combination of drugs and computer games as a solution for more. It's already happening. Uh, in, 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 in under different titles, different headings, you see more and more people spending more and more time or uh, uh, solving their inner problems with uh, uh, drugs and computer games, both legal drugs and illegal drugs. You look at Japan today, and Japan is maybe 20 years ahead of the world in, in everything, and you see all these new social phenomena of, of people having relationships with virtual, uh, virtual spouses. And you have people who never leave the house and, and just live through computers. I think once you're superfluous, you don't have power. Uh, again, we're used to the age of the masses of the 19th and 20th century, where you, all, where you, where you saw all these successful uh, massive uprisings, revolutions, revolts. So we, we, got, we are used to thinking about the masses as powerful. But this is basically a 19th century, a 20th century phenomenon. I don't think that the masses, even if they, they somehow organize themselves, uh, stand much of a chance. We are not in, in, in Russia of 1917 or in, uh, uh, or in 19th century Europe. What we are talking about now is like a second industrial revolution but the product this time will not be textiles or machines or vehicles or even weapons. The product this time will be humans themselves. We are basically learning to produce bodies and minds. Bodies and minds are going to be, the, I think, the two main products of the next wave of all these uh, uh, changes. That is, 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 is optional. Again, and if you think about it from the viewpoint of the poor, it looks terrible because throughout history, death was the great equalizer. The big consolation of the poor throughout history was that, okay, these rich people, they have it good, but they're going to die just like me. But think about a world, say, in 50 years, 100 years, where the poor people continue to die, but the rich people, in addition to all the other things they get, they also get a, a, a exemption from death. Once you really solve a problem like direct brain-computer interface, when brains and computers can interact directly, uh, for example, to take just one example, that's it. That's the end of history, that's the end of biology as we know it. Nobody has a clue once, what, what will happen once you, once you solve this. Uh, if life can basically break out of the organic realm, into the vastness of the inorganic realm, and you cannot even begin to imagine what the consequences will be, because your, our imagination at present is organic. So it's, um, if there is a point of singularity, as it's often referred to, by definition, we have no way of even ima starting to imagine what's happening beyond that. Um, looking before the point of singularity, just as the trend is, is gathering pace, there's the new attitude, I think, is to treat old age and death as technical problems, no different in essence than any other uh, uh, disease. It's like cancer, it's like Alzheimer's, it's like tuberculosis. Maybe we still don't know all the mechanisms and all the remedies, but in principle, people always die for one reason and one reason only, and that these are technical reasons, not metaphysical reasons. People today actually manage to live, and many people, as isolated, alienated individuals in the most advanced societies, many people live as alienated individuals with no community to speak about, with a very small family, it's no longer the big uh, 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 extended family. It's now a very small family, maybe just, maybe just a spouse, maybe one or two children, and even they, they might live in a different city, in a different country, and you see them maybe once in every few months, and that's it. After millions of years of, 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 of uh, evolution, suddenly, within 200 years, the family and the intimate community break, they, they collapse. Most of the roles 
fulfilled <coughs> by the family and by the intimate community for thousands and tens of thousands of years are transferred very quickly to new networks provided by the state and the market. You don't need children. You can have a pension fund. You don't need somebody to take care of you. You don't need neighbors and, 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 and sisters or brothers to take care of you when you're sick. The state takes care of you. The states provide you with police, with education, with health, with everything. In terms of ideas, in terms of religions, the most interesting place today in the world, in religious terms, is Silicon Valley. It's not the Middle East. This is where the new religions are being created now by people like Ray Kurzweil. And this, these are the religions that will take over the world.